I'm wearing my Justin Bieber. Oh, my legs hurt. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber's here today. <laughs> hey, Justin. You're watching this, Justin. Hey. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be talking about the cake face disaster that may have struck us all at one point or another in our lifetime of makeup. It's definitely happened to me. I come home, look in the mirror, and it was like... So I'm going to talk to you guys about how to avoid this. It's going to be a little bit different than my makeup do's and don'ts. It's just more so tips and tricks on how to get flawless finish, but not look too cakey and cray cray. I got a lot of tips and tricks for you. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to be testing out... A trio here the Smashbox photo finish primer the Smashbox studio skin foundation and I'm gonna be introducing you guys to the new Smashbox studio skin concealer brand new people mm -hmm. also if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet I know I said yet be sure to subscribe you know join my YouTube fam jam I do lots of weird crazy testing out stuff on this channel and I like to keep it pretty interesting so you're gonna want to subscribe <laughs> so that's all the announcements I've had we're gonna jump right in and get started right now all right, the first tip I have for avoiding the cake base or just get that flawless, smooth skin finish when doing your foundation is to exfoliate your skin. I exfoliate my skin only one time a week because I have normal to dry skin and it dries it out if I exfoliate any more than that. But I don't recommend over exfoliating. Over exfoliating your skin will definitely lead to a lot of texture on your skin and breakouts. I wouldn't exfoliate more than three times a week and um, yeah, maybe like once a week exfoliate your skin and get all that dead rough skin off and get that polished skin to get a beautiful, flawless finish. My next tip to get that smooth, beautiful skin under your foundation is to moisturize your skin. And even if you have oily skin, I recommend moisturizing. I recommend moisturizing every single day with a gel moisturizer versus a cream moisturizer. This is a tip I learned while I was working at the dermatologist. A gel moisturizer is water-based, so it's not gonna break you out versus a cream moisturizer, which most of the time it's oil based and things just get cray cray from there on. So you're going to want to use a gel based moisturizer. Even if you have oily skin, you can just use like a tiny pea sized amount of moisturizer and add it on to get that plush, smooth, hydrated skin. Two of my favorite gel ones. This one's actually a serum, so it's really lightweight. This is the Tatcha Pore Perfecting Water Gel Moisturizer. And then another one I love, both of these can be found at Sephora, is the Belief True Cream Aqua Balm. It says true cream, but it is definitely a blue gel moisturizer, and it's really awesome. Every time I use a cream moisturizer, lo and behold, I have a zit like the next day. <laughs> and I have dry skin, isn't that crazy? My next tip is definitely a facial primer. So you know the texture on your skin or the pores that show through. A facial primer can illuminate all of that. I like to use the Smashbox Photo Finish. This is their foundation primer. This one actually got an award. This is like the number one primer in the US. It is bomb.com and it's amazing for smoothing out the skin. Another key thing is don't use too much primer. Don't go crazy in with primer. Don't cover your whole entire face, ear to ear, forehead to chin with it. You can just apply it in areas that you really need it, which is what I typically do. I just massage it in a circular motion right around this area where my pores are just a little bit larger than I would like them to be. But don't add too much product because we want to keep it light. We want to keep our skin airy and we don't want the cake face to attack. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna talk about applying foundation. Now, I have quite a few tips and tricks for you with this part and not getting it all cake or cake. First of all, don't use a heavy cakey foundation. A good one is the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation and a bonus, this is a 15 hour wear foundation. It is amazing for lasting through the heat, the sweat, the tears, and the blood. I'm just kidding, that was too much. It is amazing for lasting through heat, through sweat. You're gonna have a long day, you're gonna be wearing it a long time, you're gonna be working your little tushy off. This is a great foundation for you for lasting power. Bonus, there are 22 new shades in this foundation. It looks color consistent in any light. So it's going to look great no matter what lighting you're in. It looks amazing in studio lighting. So when using this, I like to start off with a very small amount of foundation and dab it on my face and then start to blend it out. You don't want to start with too much foundation all over your face and then trying to work all that foundation in. You can just start with a very small amount and then you'll start to blend it out on your skin, which leads me to my next tip. When using a beauty blender or your makeup brush, whatever you might be using to blend it out, you don't wanna rub and start scrubbing your foundation into your skin. One, you'll get brush streaks, but that's not the whole point. It will give you a very textured feel. It could irritate dry skin, bring up little flakes. If you have a zit in the area and you're rubbing your foundation, it could irritate the zit, make it a little bit inflamed, pull up some dead skin, and then you have that unflawless finish. So you just wanna do a tapping stippling dabbing motion just blend out the foundation and you will have a flawless finish mark my words 
So if you have a pimple or something, you don't want to actually add concealer first and then your foundation on top of it. One, you just kind of wipe it away whenever you start dabbing out your foundation. And two, your foundation may actually cover the zit, so you may not even need the concealer, so you could take off that makeup that you don't need. Less is more, especially when we're trying to avoid the cake face. Less is more. That's a very hard concept for me to learn, but you know, I'm trying. First, apply your foundation all over your face. I have a lot of redness around my nose, but most of the time my foundation takes care of it. If it does and then I go in and touch up with a little bit of concealer, but first just see what your foundation can handle. All right, so let's talk about setting our foundation. Setting your foundation can be very important if you want long lasting foundation and for it to not like slough and run away. <laughs> setting your foundation can also lead to a lot of cakiness in your makeup routine. So you definitely don't want to actually set your foundation with a foundation powder because technically foundation powders will be, were created to be worn by themselves. And if you add foundation powder on top of foundation, wear it for like three to four hours, you'll start to see a little bit of a cakey, sluffy mess happening. Plus foundation powders have a lot of color to them because they're meant to cover and be the color of your skin. So if you're adding that on top of your foundation, you could switch up the color of your foundation by adding too much of this on top and things just get crazy and they get cakey. So a way to avoid that is you can still set your foundation, just use a translucent powder. One of my favorites is the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Powder and it doesn't flash back on camera. It's basically invisible and it absorbs oil and it will definitely set that makeup. So sometimes whenever you set your makeup, you can see the powder on your skin or you just look really white and powdery. Just a quick little tip I wanted to share with you guys that I like to do is I like to take my damp beauty blender and take that powder that's all over my face. You just take that damp beauty blender and you just pat the powder just like you're pressing or melting the powder into the skin and then you can spray it with a little bit of whatever your favorite setting spray is at the moment and it just like melts all that makeup into your skin and it's just like flawless finish but without too much makeup happening all right let's talk about concealer so i have a special little friend here with me today this is the new smashbox skin concealer and my first tip is if you don't want cakey makeup don't go in with like heavy concealer because they're out there on the market. There's very, very, very full coverage, but after you put on your full coverage foundation and all that jazz, and then that full coverage concealer, you're just asking for cakiness. It happens. I've really been enjoying the Studio Skin Concealer. It's a waterproof concealer, but it also covers well, but isn't too heavy on the skin. So I know as you've seen me and all your favorite Instagram artists, <laughs> so me, I'm just kidding. Apply concealer in a triangular shape all the way under your eyes. That is a lot of makeup, and if you want to avoid the cakiness, you don't necessarily have to completely cover the whole under eye area whenever you're applying it to your skin. You can just add a little bit and then blend it out in a triangular, like spread that concealer out in a triangular motion and, and drag the product around just a little bit instead of caking it all there and then working it all in, trying to get it all blended out. And then also, once you're done with your foundation and you're like, yeah, I got it. Or redness like around my nose then you can add a very small amount of concealer and just dab it out and so doing a swiping back and forth motion like I said will irritate the skin make sure you're pressing just slightly dabbing stippling out the concealer and my last tip for avoiding the cake face is whenever you feel like your makeup is just like sloughing off your skin has gotten greasy it's just looking really textured and not pretty you can use toilet paper this is used more for than just wiping your hiney <laughs> You can actually take a piece of toilet paper. Some people like to then take the toilet paper and peel it into another half where it's like this very thin tissue sheet. But in my high school, our toilet paper was already thin tissue sheets. We did not have double ply. I just like to fold it like this and just take the whole piece and just lightly press it. I've also heard of people taking the seats that cover the toilet, just nabbing one out of the bathroom, cutting it up, and using it as an old blonde sheet, which is a nifty trick. And thirdly, they have these blotterati by the Beauty Blender, and it's just like this little gimmicky sponge right here, and you can just like, you know, absorb that old. The only thing about these, they can hoard bacteria, so I throw mine in the washing machine to clean them, and it works out just fine. Hmm. So hope all my tips and tricks help you. It will definitely create a lighter form of makeup that still has that nice coverage that you want. And it also will help you have that nice, flawless, smooth finish on your skin. There are times that I do some of these and wear heavier makeup, but it's when I know I'm gonna be wearing the makeup for a very short amount of time, so I don't mind if it looks a bit heavy. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Be sure and subscribe before you leave. You don't wanna miss out on the craziness that I put on this channel. I'll catch you all in my next video. 
Bye. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just stuck.